Welcome to Working in Teams, sharing resources and information, tools to optimize performance. The objectives for sharing resources and information, tools to optimize performance, are to demonstrate skillful use of collaborative tools and techniques, develop a system to provide full transparency of key information related to actions of the HIT team, design an information sharing structure that supports high performance and knowledge exchange. Sharing resources and information is important for teams to reach their goals and move toward high levels of performance. Several elements are foundational in building structures to support sharing between team members. Technology changes teams' processes. Teams can do today with technology support much more than they could do yesterday. Sometimes that is literally yesterday. The more information is available to team members, the more responsibility for team members. The problem is not having information, but not being able to manage the immense amount of information that is available. It adds to the responsibility of every team member to be conscientious about the quality and quantity of information that is shared. Using a system for sharing information offers an opportunity to reduce the duplication of efforts and unneeded redundancy of information. As information becomes available in a quicker flow rate, it is important that team members measure up by being more flexible in their access and responses to the new and updated information channels and content. Team members should learn to remain focused on the goal and the processes, then use the technology to assist in moving them forward, not the other way around. They should not start with the technology and attempt to find ways to use it. Keep your goals in clear view and use tools that help you reach them. Sharing resources and information requires team members to adjust their behaviors in several ways. Team members need to adopt some consistent format standards for communicating, both in the use of jargon and the protocols used for processing the information. Members should refrain from protecting their information or using jargon that separates their material from others. In other words, putting it in a silo that only they can access and understand. Full transparency normally trumps keeping some information private. That is, it needs to be clear on the team when certain information is not being shared and for what reason. One of the items in the team's ground rules should always be to define clear processes for organizing around the tasks required to reach the stated goals. The behavior of team members should be aligned with the processes that are performed by the team. Those processes should align with the content or outcomes the team is addressing and developing. Often, the communication tools used by teams offer opportunities to level the participation for all team members with regard to time and distance. This allows team members the opportunity to redistribute the workload where necessary on specific elements of the development process. The migration toward text-based communication offers several distinct advantages. First, text-based messaging tends to level the playing field by eliminating potential stumbling blocks to effective communication. These could include such things as regional dialects, cultural differences, differing levels of language proficiency, communicative disorders, and so forth. Along with the advantages, text-based communication introduces several disadvantages, such as potential constraints due to differing capabilities associated with devices in use and the level of infrastructure that supports those devices. Examples could include simple cell phones versus smartphones, high-speed broadband versus dial-up, and so forth. In HIT projects and across HIT teams, the need for sharing resources and information is critical. Due to the often mobile nature of HIT, using technology that untethers an individual from a physical place is almost a mandate. Teams that are comprised of cross-department members need a way to quickly relay new issues, new ideas, and to share new knowledge. This may dictate that members have both access to, and the skill to use, alternative communications devices. It is important to realize that something that many of us in urban settings take for granted may be nearly impossible in remote communities. Case in point, cellular telephony, smartphones, and access to 3G and 4G networks and so on 
Let's talk about some of the devices that are being used to facilitate team communication. As the proliferation of digital communications continues, new devices and delivery methods are becoming available that greatly facilitate communication. For example, many healthcare providers are already employing smaller, more portable devices, such as tablet PCs and netbooks, to collect and manage, pa to collect and manage patient information. Healthcare professionals are using smartphones to stay connected to their patients' information, and smartphone apps are being developed to access health information quickly and efficiently. Patients are rapidly increasing their use of electronic devices as related to health. Global connectivity across the globe allows almost anyone to be reached at any time and in any location. The communication platforms shown on the slide are ones that you may be quite familiar with. Remember, however, that many of you may end up in rural communities or in areas where the uptake of technology may be lagging. You need to consider the level of digital competency across your client base. Rural people and the aged may find these types of technology off-putting, a consideration that every HIT professional must think about. As portable computing devices continue to evolve, the digital networks that carry their signals are also evolving. Do you understand the difference? It is hard to appear credible if you do not understand the difference between 3G and 4G. For example, let's say that you are working to link several widely dispersed safety net clinics and are unaware of the connectivity capacity in the region. Suggesting a solution that requires a degree of connectivity that does not exist or that is improbable can make you appear foolish. A few of these networking technologies, and certainly not exhaustive, are on the slide. 2G connectivity occurred when phones changed from analog signals to digital, which opened the door for faster and faster data transmission. 3G connectivity allows enough bandwidth or transmission speed to be able to send and receive email, supports media streaming and downloading, and enables web browsing through a smartphone usually averaging about 3 megabytes per second, shortened to Mbps, an abbreviation you should be familiar with. 4G connectivity is like 3G on steroids, where speeds reach near 100 megabytes per second. Wi-Fi or wireless fidelity connections currently offer relatively fast data transfer, but their use is limited to relatively small hotspots, usually within a few hundred feet of the nearest wireless access point. Many people have a Wi-Fi network set up in their homes or offices, and it is common to find Wi-Fi in hotels and meeting centers. Wi-Fi cell technology, part of the 4G connectivity movement, can support nearly one gigabyte of data per second and promises to help close the current gap between the carrying capacity of Wi-Fi and the accessibility of 3G. WiMAX systems are also constrained to a certain area, but they can cover an entire city or regional area. At present, nearly all of these connectivity options require a subscription, although the United Nations in 2011 claimed that unfettered access to the Internet was a basic human right. The point here is that, as we think about team construction, recalling that diversity and distribution is good, and we consider what is possible with devices and networks, then we begin to grasp the capabilities of collaborative tools in optimizing team performance. Now, take a deeper look at one of the devices mentioned on the previous slide, doing some individual investigation if you are unfamiliar with them. Perhaps you have used one of these devices. What types of questions might you ask to determine the communication needs of your team? How might you go about determining feasibility? For example, you may need to assess the cost to the individual or the potential to fund communication costs via your project budget. If you decide that the budget should fund the cost of team communications, what impact do you think this may have? What strategies might you think of that would prevent budget overages or inappropriate use of connectivity for non-team related activities? How might you assess the willingness of team members to use the technology? How might you encourage the growth of team members in using new technologies that they are unfamiliar with? In other words, how would you grow their ability? What strategies can you employ or what resources can you tap into to find out what sort of devices and connectivity options are available? Have you witnessed the use of certain types of communication devices in health-related settings? Which ones were most popular? How were people using them?
The takeaway point here is that assessing the user base for current methods of communicating may help you as a team leader to dovetail into existing patterns and sensibly suggest new ones based on the points covered on this slide. What are examples of other tools that we can use for team interactions? Let's have a look at both asynchronous and synchronous tools that may be beneficial in facilitating strong team communication. A few examples of asynchronous tools that are currently popular are Basecamp, SharePoint, Confluence, Wikis. Examples of synchronous tools may include Adobe Connect, Wimba, GoToMeeting, Illuminate Live. How might either of these types of tools be used in your team? Now, take a deeper look at one of the products mentioned on the previous slide, doing some individual investigation if you are unfamiliar with them. You, can't re you can find really brief descriptions all over the web if you use Google or another search engine. Have you ever used any of these tools, either synchronous or asynchronous? What are some of the considerations that may come into play as you and your team decides on the use of either? For example, synchronous tools are great to stimulating discussion over distance, but if you're working with global HIT teams, different time zones may preclude full participation from all members of the team. Similar to the communications devices and connectivity considerations, how might you go about determining feasibility for the use of any of these tools? What considerations of budget, ability, and willingness might you need to address? How would you do that? In short, many of these products have a great gee whiz factor, but if they are tough to use or if they require certain levels of connectivity, then they will not be a beneficial tool to enhance team interaction. We offer here a listing of some tools that may be helpful to support collaborative or team-based document development. This is by no means an exhaustive list. More and more of these products are being found on the cloud, which is very helpful when busy teams that are geographically separate are working on a collaborative document. In HIT project work, it is very difficult to assemble people in one spot at one time. Tools such as those listed on the slide were developed in part for situations like this. When an HIT team is formed, one of the first things that will become apparent is that not all team members will be available for every meeting. There will be physicians who are called away at the last minute, nurses who can't break away from patient care, and office managers who are dealing with a billing crisis. This doesn't mean that they will not be productively active team members, since work can still be done outside of a face-to-face -face meeting environment. It is challenging to have the most up-to-date documents ready for review by all the team members. In short, we have to support the nature of teams, particularly in health-related environments. Busy, distributed, distractible, there's an app for that. A brief introduction to the tools from the last slide will be provided here. It is up to you to explore these and to see what might be interesting or useful for your efforts. The applications can be tucked away into your virtual HIT tool chest for the day that you will need something like this. Versioning control, the bane of many collaborative teams, has a new friend in the software called Redliner. Redliner is particularly adept at helping teams to get a handle on collaborative documents in regards to keeping the version numbers straight. Google Docs is a similar tool, but possibly with fewer feature functions. But of course, Google Docs is free. Doing Text is another example of an app that handles document collaboration. It resides on a hosted platform, which has both pros and cons, but it does generate a unique URL that can be distributed across teams, allowing ready access to anyone with an internet connection. Kablink is a free and open source assembly of collaboration widgets, specifically designed to help collaborative team members in both online and offline work. For example, if a team member completes work offline, then connects and uploads work, it will be automatically synced with other team members' work that is already online. This is a handy feature, particularly for HIT road warriors who travel a lot. Another example of a piece of software that supports collaborative teamwork is Kalano's Workspace. This is a free and open source application with a catchy motto of Think Out of the Inbox. 
The other tools from previous slides include PBWorks, which is a suite of tools that includes real-time updates of changes to related workspaces, allows a user to edit a document in real time, supports instant messaging, and supports voice over IP collaboration. Business and legal document templates are featured on the platform and can be purchased via an online store that is accessible to customers or users. This is not an open source app, so this and others like it may cost money to use. A free file sharing service, Drop.io, similar to Dropbox and other similar applications, can be very helpful to teams. By allowing team members to upload files, then producing a URL that can be sent to authenticated users to access, collaborative teamwork can be enhanced. Social Text combines a wiki with a blog, providing a robust collaboration platform. Social Text allows the creation of personalized dashboard by individuals, which adds some degree of user appeal. The Social Text platform supports email and microblogging as well, two features which may add extra value to teamwork, particularly as teams look to consolidate the number of different software applications used to support group work. ETB, another tool to support teams in the digital sense, combines aspects of Twitter, Dig, wikis, and blogs to form an environment where ideas can be shared, enhanced, and built upon. Users are each given a personal page, called a TP, where other team members jump in and contribute thoughts and perspectives. In this fashion, an idea can be fleshed out, tapping into the collective wisdom of the team. Member Hub is similar to some of the other applications already covered. In essence, Member Hub is a gathering area for a team to interact, and it provides features such as shared calendars, discussion boards, dashboards, and other innovative online tools for shared work. Collab and OneNote are two remaining examples. Collab is very well designed and has obvious input from user interface designers. It is edgy, engaging, and offers a very feature-rich collection of applications designed with the collaborative team in mind. OneNote, not quite as robust as some of the others, but still useful, can be distributed via the cloud. It can be quite useful for the collaborative creation of procedure books and the like. It can be likened to a virtual three-ring binder that can be shared and edited by team members. There are scores of these kinds of applications all over the place, but one last one to mention is Baboogle which is a combination of Blackboard and Google. You may want to investigate these and others to see which, if any, work for you in regards to team and document collaboration. Summing up all this discussion on different types of tools that can be used to support the work of teams in collaborative document development, we want to return to the starting line. It is not uncommon for team members to either get lost in the weeds of the application or to be somewhat averse to its use. Ultimately, the tools need to be easy to use, support, not thwart, the work of the team, and a learning curve should be expected for some members of the team. The goal, of course, is to maximize the value of tools of this type, which will include making sure that everyone understands how to use it and that the team commits to using it as well. Thinking back to prior slides of leader characteristics, recall that we said that a leader must lead by example. It follows, therefore, that the leaders must be active users of the application. Why are collaborative document tools worth investing time and effort in? A primary rationale is to reduce workload, frustration, and error. Let's say, for example, that your team is working on a report detailing the process of patient flow through a large physician practice in preparation for generating a request for proposal, RFP, from a large HIT vendor. Four team members are tasked with creating the document. Jennifer, one of the team members, has taken the lead because she has a lot of experience with process flow modeling. The other three members are assigned subtasks and are asked to write up their components and email them to Jennifer by Tuesday. Two of the three make the deadline. Jennifer, under the gun to deliver on time, decides not to wait for member three. She then takes the two emailed documents that she does have and incorporates them into a single document. Jennifer then sends version 2.0 back out to the entire team with a 24-hour turnaround time. After she sends out version 2.0, team member three emails his document two days late. Jennifer manually inserts the late contributions into version 2.0, making it now version 2.5. The other two members have already made their additions and corrections to version 2.0. You can see where this is going. Frustration mounts. 
Jennifer is loaded with document reconciliation and versioning control, and effort is wasted. With this said, an application is probably not going to make people more timely, but what it can do is lessen the agony for the team lead and those who met their timelines, reduces effort because everyone is editing, adding, and commenting in the same document, and reduces the chance of error that is inherent in versioning control. Collaborative document development is valuable whether the team is dispersed across an institution or across the globe. Just as we have done with the other tools that we have discussed in this unit, take a deeper look at a few of the collaborative document development applications mentioned on the previous slides. If you are unfamiliar with them, do some individual investigation. Many of the tools mentioned prior have short demos or testimonials on their web pages. Use a search engine to read up on a few of the tools. Are you familiar with any of these tools or others like them? What aspects do you like or dislike? If you have not used any tools of this type, what might be some of the challenges and the benefits in their use? What are some of the considerations that may come into play as you and your team decides upon use of either? How might you go about determining feasibility for the use of any of these tools? What considerations of budget, ability, and willingness might you need to address? How would you do that? Many of these types of applications are free or open source. Some are costly. Some are bare bones, and some have tremendous feature functionality. What are the trade-offs in regards to these aspects? According to the 2007 article entitled Transformations in Business and Economics about Virtual Teamwork, seeking and providing information are tightly integrated activities. Therefore, information sharing across a team is critical to its success. How can one go about evaluating this aspect of collaborative teamwork? There are three umbrella categories for team evaluation in this respect. Observational rating scales, team self-assessment, and the event-based approach to training and measurement. Observational rating scales are standardized tools that both train observers how to observe and record what they see, but to also rate certain aspects of the event. Examples may include behaviorally anchored rating scales, bars, and others. Tools designed for evaluating team performance in healthcare settings may include the Mayo High Performance Teamwork Scale and BARS scales, or something called the CATS tool that captures both the quantity and the quality of teamwork behaviors. Observational methods have been criticized because of their subjectivity. For example, you may see one thing and interpret it a certain way, while someone else may watch the same thing and have a totally different interpretation. Observational methods only reveal what can be seen, therefore things like team communication cannot be measured in this fashion. Instead, many researchers have turned to individual assessments completed by team members. Event-based assessment techniques, EBAT, were specifically designed to deal with the complexities of rating performance during complex team interactions and may incorporate a combination of observed and assessed elements in the evaluation of the team. Team self-assessment is mostly not observable and is based on the team rating themselves, others, team process, and interactions across teams. Tools of this type and many others are helpful ways to measure defined aspects of team performance and behavior, especially as concerned with collaborative activities. This concludes sharing resources and information, tools to optimize performance. In summary, you should now have gained an appreciation for a variety of collaborative tools that can assist team performance. You have also met the challenges in demonstrating skillful use of collaborative tools and techniques, developing a system to provide full transparency of key information related to actions of the HIT team, designing an information sharing structure that supports high performance and knowledge exchange.